Hey, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to sell transformational deep dive coaching packages and services in an attention economy. We're no longer in an information economy, we are in an attention economy. And if you don't understand that, you can't succeed. So listen to this whole conversation, it's vital to your success. All right, so this video is going to be like a meta video meaning it's going to be high level and it's going to be conceptual and it's going to be about an issue that you must understand mm -hmm. if you're in entrepreneurship of any kind we're going to pretty much put the whole context in coaching because most of you are, you know that are following our channels um, are either coaches or you want to be coaches so we're going to put in that context, but the, the concepts apply to a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time on this video, so we are going to keep the explanations of each one of these things, which could be a two hour masterclass every single bullet. But uh, we're going to keep them shallow because we want to teach the meta of all of this first. Right. And I don't mean Facebook. I mean, big bigness. <laughs> um, so. <clears throat> How do you teach transformation in an attention economy? Now, the title of this, actually, the last time we did something like this was how do you teach transformation in an information economy? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really critical that you understand we're not in an information economy anymore. We are in an attention economy. And what that means is that our attention is what's being bought and sold online, primarily all the social media platforms, but not only the social media platforms, but their business model is literally to attract our attention, get us addicted to their platforms. So they're trying to get us, they're trying to get our attention addicted to them because the more attention that they have on their platforms, the more money they make. So we are now in a situation where there are, multi, multi, multi-billion dollar corporations in, I believe, a multi-trillion dollar uh, market whose main intention is to get the human brain addicted to their candy. Mm -hmm. And what's scary about that is the way that they're getting us addicted is through technology. It's not through a bunch of human trial and error. It's through technology that can try something and try something and try something and try something. Like they can try a million different things literally in the time that it would take us as humans to try like five. And so the speed of the effort to get us addicted through our behaviors is I think staggering to all of us. Now we need to understand that from two different perspectives. As a learner, as a student, what are you paying attention to and what are you consuming? And then as a teacher, what are you putting out there? So we're going to speak to those two different perspectives, or at the very least, I want you to be thinking about those two different perspectives. So we're going to give you eight different toggles that'll make sense here in a minute. We're going to give you eight different toggles mm -hmm. to go from the attention economy to the transformation economy. Because you need to create your own transformation economy. Mm -hmm. You've got to create your own transformation ecosystem. The, the platforms will not. That's mm -hmm. up to you. That's one of the reasons why you can't play mm -hmm. transformation game in the attention playgrounds. You just can't. You don't own the playground. You don't own the platform. You don't own the rules. You're not on the board of when they decide to change everything. So if you want to be a transformational leader, you have to create your own ecosystem and therefore create your own economy. But you got to get out of the attention economy to do it, but you got to get into the attention economy to bring them into your own economy. Is that making sense? Hopefully it's making sense. What do you want to add, Michelle? I, I mean, just go back and re-listen to the, this beginning part because really understanding like the, the playground that we're trying to play in is critical for this conversation and recognizing that I, I know for myself, I've tried for a long time to, to do my work inside of a, um, a, a playground that wasn't 
actually created to support my work. And so then yeah. we can end up feeling like a failure, like we're doing like not enough or we're struggling and, and people aren't listening when the reality is we're just we're playing in the wrong place. So if we understand it, then we can have some kind of control over it so that we can create our own ecosystem and then meet people where they are, but then bring them into the space that we've created. Yeah, that's everything. Mm -hmm. So with the time left that we have in this video, we're going to, you know, this is going to be more like a workshop. We're going to be breaking this down. You know, we're going to give obviously whatever we think you need in terms of examples and stuff like that. But, um, but we're not going to go deep because we have eight different things that we want to teach you in this. And we really want to open your awareness and we want this to be a beginning for you. We're not going to, we're not going to close all the loops for you. In fact, we're going to open them hopefully. And then you're going to see where they are operating in your life or where they're operating in your, in your teaching. Um, but with what I laid out, attention, information, transformation. So up until I would say about five years ago, we did live in an information economy and people were sharing information, people were consuming information, but we as the consumers had a lot more agency in the information that we searched for and then found. And then over the course of time with all the automation of, uh, you know, all the algorithms and stuff like that, they started feeding us things. So they basically have been laying the breadcrumbs in front of us based on the steps that we've taken behind us. And they do it all automated now. So, and they know the breadcrumbs that we've picked up back there. So those are the breadcrumbs they're going to lay in front of us. And so a lot of it has taken our own agency out of the decision-making process. They're just going, oh, you watch that here, watch this. Oh, you bought that here, buy this. And there's an element of that that's really soothing to the brain. And I know I've found myself getting on Netflix and just seeing what Netflix uh, suggests that I watch. Because it's like, oh, Netflix knows me. Right. What do you think I need to watch? Netflix? Same thing with uh, YouTube. Same thing with Amazon. Oh, you bought this thing. You should probably buy this thing, right? Amazon, I think, was one of the first. And Netflix, I believe, was, was one of the first, I think, definitely in the uh, entertainment market that, that added this idea of you watch this. Let me give you a suggested video. And that was a long, long time ago. It's one of the reasons why Netflix eventually pushed Blockbuster out of the market right. because Netflix catered to the consumer's desires based on their previous choices. And so it was just a better user experience. But back then it, we weren't under their spell, right? We weren't under their control as much. So that's what the information economy used to be. The consumers had a lot more control in it. Now, I think we're in this attention economy for all the reasons that I've been sharing. And here's what you got to understand now. From attention to transformation, you're now two levels removed. From information to transformation is only one level. You just got to go from here and bring people there. Well, now you got to go from here to here to here. And one of the problems with this is that virtually everything, I think, in the coaching market is still operating on information economy principles. So the stuff that used to work before attention economy just doesn't work like it used to. And some of it doesn't work at all, right? So a lot of us are following literally obsolete principles, obsolete philosophies. If your philosophy is obsolete, what do you think the techniques are based on the obsolete philosophy, right? So some of it is just useless. Some of it hasn't been adapted to the, the new market, right? Now, if any of this is sounding confusing, remember, if this is meta stuff. This is high level stuff, right? If this is confusing, here's why you have to at least have a base understanding of this. Everybody is going through this. Correct. You, if you want to help humans, you need to know what the humans are going through. Mm -hmm. You need to know what the humans are programmed with if you want to help them. So just saying, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I don't want to understand human behavior, not going to work. My advice to you is don't be an entrepreneur. 
take all the money that you're going to spend, go enjoy your life, right? Mm -hmm. You can't decide to be a leader and not understand the people that you're trying to lead. You can't decide you want to change people's behavior and not understand the behavior that they're currently in. Mm -hmm. So you must understand what we're talking about here, at least at a high level, if you're going to be influential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's impossible to meet people where they are if you don't know where they are. You don't know where they are. Yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Anything you want to add before we dive into this? No, let's dive in. I mean, yes, but also we're not yeah, going to be here for the sake are. of the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so remember, each one of these could be like a two-hour masterclass. We're just going to give you the high level right now. And what we're going to, the way that we're, we're, that we're presenting this to you is that these are like toggle buttons, right? And a toggle button is one of those things, you've seen it all the time. You might not know that it's a toggle button, but you know this is how we turn all the applications on our phones and all that stuff. There's a little button and it's to the left and you swipe it and then it's to the right and then you know the thing will turn green or you, notification is now on or whatever. That's called a toggle button. And that's how I want you to, to think about all of these principles because these are either or principles. Now, it's actually very rare that I believe in either or principles. When it comes to human behavior, there's almost always a continuum. There's almost always a spectrum. But with these, it's either or. And it's really critical that, that you get that. Um, so the first toggle is, and the way I'm, I'm positioning this, and I'll move this closer and have to lift it up when we get down below. Um, the information economy operates over here. And what if you want to be a transformational agent and coach, you've got to operate over here. So the, the first one is that oh, this pen is going to bother me. Yeah, it's not great. All right. Hang on. Michelle Dancer saying or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let us know uh, if you are here live. I see a lot of you that are joining on YouTube, on Facebook. Just let us know where, where you're joining in from. And if you have questions about any of the content that we're talking about today, anything that comes up that you want more clarity on, go ahead and, and type it in the chat. Even if we don't get to it today, we'll be doing more videos and we want to be able to support you and answer your questions. What if they're here dead? Um, then, uh, if they're here dead, then they should still be able to communicate their questions. Oh, that's true. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, oh my goodness. This just about knocked me over. Ah, oh, I love, I love a good dry erase marker. <laughs> okay. So the first one is expectations is how information is generally sold. And what that means is if you buy my thing, this is what you can expect. Mm -hmm. When you go through this stuff, these are all the outcomes that you're going to get, right? But you can't get the outcomes until you buy the thing. Right. So this is, there's like a wall here. The expectation needs to you be sold so that the people are, or from a consumer standpoint, the expectation needs to be bought in order to get the benefit of the product. So then as a salesperson, you've got to sell expectations. If you want to be a transformational leader, you want to sell experiences. Can Is it still easy to hear me when I turn around? Because my mic is behind me now. It is. Yeah. Okay. So as a transformational leader, you've got to sell experiences. Here's the beautiful thing about that. It makes sales so much easier. Because now you just give people experiences. Give them experiences. Give them experiences for free. And then when they experience something, then just offer more of those experiences. And it's so much easier for a consumer to go, I like the way that felt. I like the way that my mind shifted. I like the change that I felt for free. I want more of that. That's right. So it's way easier for people to sell experiences. And most of you that follow us, you're not salespeople because we would have pissed you off from inside of the first five minutes, right? So you're more of a teacher and it's way easier to teach experiences than to sell expectations. 
Absolutely. So this toggle needs to be that way. Anything you want to add to that before? Yeah, I mean, it's just in this particular case, it's about just doing the thing that you love to do and trusting that that is going to be the thing that is going to reach into and connect with the people you're trying to connect with versus trying to paint them some picture of a possibility. It's easier and more effective. Yeah. We're going to have to do a full masterclass on this. Like we'll have to do a webinar and it'll be two hours or whatever. (laughs) Uh, Because we just have so much to, to talk about here. But one key piece here to understand, again, you got to understand the people. People have been buying expectations and being disappointed for a long time now. And the more automated things are, the more people's expectations are being disappointed. Mm. So when you show up selling expectations, you're actually triggering the skepticism in people, especially online. And it's just hard to, to... to scale the wall of skepticism because then you have to outsell the salespeople who make a living selling expectations. Yeah. You you don't want to do that. All right. The second thing is, man, I feel like this one should be moved to the, to the bottom. Yeah. I'm going to move the second one to the bottom. So the next, the next one is, I mean, the, the word is right there. Information. to implementation. Hmm. That marker is loud. Fantastic. I love it. (laughs) And it smells amazing. Not quite the same as smelling gasoline. Mm -hmm. But right up there. I mean, right out of the pump. But pretty good. I used to smell the markers all the time. And and almost invariably, I, I would just be so lost in the smell that I would end up like touching my nose or my lip or something and coloring my face. But now I know the healthy distance. You got to be careful. Somebody might think your nose is bleeding. Yeah, I know. That would be bad. So these go hand in hand because information is really just speaking to people's intellect. Mm -hmm. But implementation is the only way anybody will ever change anything about their lives, let alone their entire lives, right? Mm -hmm. Information has never changed a human life. Mm -hmm. But implementation does. So when you're consuming, if you're consuming and not implementing what you're consuming, you're not doing anything that could change anything in your life. That's just like a blunt truth. If you're teaching and you want people to change their lives, you have to teach the implementation and facilitate the implementation of the information. And that's a whole nother thing. Again, don't have time to go go into it right here, but um, this has to be toggled that way if you want to change people's lives. Absolutely. I mean, even just deciding to do something isn't the same as actually doing it. Right. By the time I draw eight toggle buttons, I'm going to be a masterful toggle button drawer. And I'm just going to let this go, that this is blue and this is blue and, and all the rest of the ink is going to be black. I'm impressed. Yeah. There was a time you wouldn't be able to do that. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. So the next one is fruits. What this means is what most people are focused on and what most people are selling are the fruits of the tree, right? Like this is the nice, shiny apple or orange or pear or whatever you're, you're trying to sell, right? These are the outcomes. This is the sexy stuff. This is what everybody's wanting. And, and by the way, none of this is unimportant. You gotta understand, like all of these things can be incorporated along with transformation when done properly. So when we say it's either or, it doesn't mean only go to implementation and never teach information because information is needed for implementation. Right. So we're not saying that you're going to have to delete and erase everything that's over here on the left side, but you've got to shift your focus to everything on the right side. And now sometimes that means, all right, well, you're going to have to use some of this and incorporate it. And the way you incorporate it is going to be different for each one of these, not because they're different concepts, obviously. But I just want to be clear that we're not saying, like, don't ever do this again. Like, don't ever speak to people's desires. Of course. People don't buy 
what, like um, diet programs, people buy 20 pounds lighter, right? right? People buy the outcome. But when only the, when the focus is only on the fruits and then especially the, te- the, the sales of it is only on the fruits, then people's lives don't get changed. So if you want to be a transformational agent, you need to understand how to, first of all, you need to understand, and then you need to be able to teach, and then you need to be able to facilitate helping people change their roots, Mm -hmm. because it's the roots of the tree that change the fruits of the tree, right? So if, if you're not, if you're not helping people change the roots that created everything in their life, you're you're not helping them change their life. Mm -mm. Anything else? Yeah. You're just selling band-aids. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next one is a focus on sales. The majority of the industry, and you'll see that these like, like, you know, these all line up together and kind of feed into the same cycle, right? The majority of the industry uh, is focused on the ability to sell. If you are in the coaching world and you are a transformational coach at some point in time or want to be a transformational coach, at some point in time, you probably realize, oh, I got to be, 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 be better at sales, right? Because somebody probably told you that you need to be better at sales. And if sales is uncomfortable to you, rather than you, and I'm saying you, but I did this, Michelle did this, like pretty much all of us are going to do this. Rather than us going, hmm, sales is uncomfortable let me learn from this salesperson how to sell. What if we would have said the way we're selling is uncomfortable? Right. What if I learn a more aligned way to sell what I'm actually selling? Mm-hmm. Because the discomfort comes from misalignment. It doesn't come from your inability to say certain words. I mean, yes, there are sales concepts for sure, but most of us don't have a, a healthy relationship to the idea of being sold in any kind of a slimy way. So we have this association to sales, but then we go, oh, in order to be a business person, we need to learn how to sell the way they sell. Right. Now, there is no business without sales. So again, I'm not saying don't worry about selling. Of course, you have to sell. Because selling is just a transaction. It, it's an exchange, right? But the energy of sales mm-hmm. is what needs to change for virtually all of you. And, and I want you to stop trying to sell like the salespeople. Mm-hmm. I want you to, to teach like teachers. And then again, it's easier to sell you know, experiences and all that stuff. Like one of the things that you'll find is when you start toggling these over here, a lot of the stuff that you've really struggled with in the past goes away. Mm-hmm. because it's misalignment, right. right? It's not that you didn't have the ability to do this stuff. It just didn't work with who you are, or what you were trying to operate under. And then you shift some of these things. And you're like, oh, I don't really have any challenges over here. Or they become easier to deal with. So instead of, from an energy standpoint, selling, you're going to do a much better job in sales when you toggle to advocating. Mm-hmm. And so- you got to... You got to understand so much in order to be able to do that. What are you going to say? I just, it's so good because what I see it happen a lot of the times is that when a coach doesn't feel the alignment in the sales process because they're trying to learn how to sell like a sales person, then they, they shut down completely and they struggle to even offer their product at all, which is really sad because if we're not doing that, then we're not actually, we're not helping anybody if people don't even know that we're in business. So that particular switch from selling over to advocating is huge. Huge. And energetically, it's going to be more aligned with you as a teacher yeah. and you as a coach, mm-hmm. because nobody has a resistance to advocating for people. No. Most teachers have resistance to sales. Mm-hmm. And then when you come from a place of advocating, it's easier to offer the sale. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so I made the comment earlier about my toggle drawing ability. These are getting progressively worse. This just looks like an eye now of somebody looking to the right. They all kind of look like that. But these were these are thinner. Like that first one was the best one. I I man, you know, it's probably the change in the ink color that's getting me all disoriented. I don't know. It can't be the artist, it has to be the tool. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, next one is hype 
You didn't do fads. What do we do? Oh. Where do we oh. turn all? I did fads in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's so much focus on fads. Like what's the next thing? What's the, you know, the keto diet of, of health? What's the, the quick fix? What's the Band-Aid? What's the, what's the sexy, quick, shortcut, guaranteed, one-size-fits-all turnkey approach? Those are all fats. That's just icing, right? Mm -hmm. You have to understand. You have to teach. You have to facilitate foundations mm -hmm. and or fundamentals. Kind of, I use those interchangeably. Um, the problem is foundations are not sexy and fads are. Mm -hmm. And there is no such thing. This is a really critical piece. There's no such thing as a novel foundation. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a new foundation. Why is that so critical to understand? The brain always wants novelty. Yeah. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Now, one of the reasons the brain always wants novelty is because it's caught up in all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's caught up in the sexiness, the shortcuts, the fruits, like, oh, I tried to change the fruits of my tree, but it didn't work. So what's the next thing I can try to just change the fruits of my tree? What's the next information I can get to just do this? So there's like this frenetic energy that's created in all this that feeds off itself. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the, each hit of the drug of dopamine that we take actually leads us to just take another one. Yep. And then another one and then another one. Then we look back and go, wow, we spent 20 years chasing fats mm -hmm. and we're actually no further forward than had we just gone for foundations. So novelty is a human like biological desire mm -hmm. and novelty doesn't live in foundation mm -hmm. or fundamentals. Now, are there, oh, but you know what I was going to say, you know how to add novelty to that? What's your answer, Michelle? How to add novelty to foundations? How do you add novelty to foundations? Well, what comes to me immediately is be myself, like That's in it. all of that. Yeah. That's it. It's just because I'm I'm novel. Right. You have a novel perspective mm -hmm. on non-novel, unnovel, anti-novel, mm -hmm. whatever the opposite of novel is. Mm -hmm. You have a novel perspective on old foundations. You have a novel perspective on old fundamentals, but most people aren't willing to be themselves. So you're not adding novelty to this piece. And that's why people just keep going over here, right? All right, next one is hype. Oh, that's a, whoo. I think that's an upgrade right there. So the toggle button of hype looking kind of raggedy honestly hope thank you <laughs> thank you for meeting my celebration of self with shutdown i toggled away from hype perfect <laughs> now hope i don't mean like the you know kind of the the substanceless idea of just hope your way mm -hmm. into something that's not what i mean Hope is actually a byproduct mm. of giving people something different that they can believe in and then go, hmm, if I go into the roots rather than just try to color the fruits like I've always done, if you give somebody something new and you give them an experience they haven't found before, then hope is a result of that. Mm. And people chase hope, but people sell hope in the form of hype over here. Right. We just hype you up, get you all riled up, and now buy this information. And this is the expectation you can have. And you can change your orange tree into an apple tree tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then that only works never. Right. All right. The next one, the penultimate one, is... Good word. Thank you. I now have... Post toggle stress disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I like felt myself go, don't do it. Just don't even do it. Just stop. Ms. Winnicott, I, I have hope in, in your ability to master the toggle button drawing. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So to go from cells, and I know that's kind of a weird way to, you know, 
it's usually sales, right? Or sell, but to go from cells, the act of creating a cell, right? To, to sell somebody to cells, hmm. get into their body. You do that with experiences. You do that with roots. You do that with foundation. You do that with all of this. When people feel something in the cells of their body, they'll want more, assuming it's a positive thing, right? They'll want more. So if you can help people release something that they've always felt or help people experience something that they never felt, then you're going to be a much more powerful advocator. You're going to be a more powerful facilitator. You're going to just change more lives. Mm -hmm. And then the final one is most people are trying to look good yes. and that must be toggled. I got a bad angle on this one. So no judgment on, on this one to being good. Yes. Looking good is intellect. It's ego. It's perception. It's approval. It's trying to avoid abandonment. It's trying to avoid failure. It's trying to avoid rejection. It's all the stuff that's built into our brain. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to look good. We want to try to impress people right. rather than looking good commit to being good. Mm -hmm. But here's the challenge there. When you commit to being good at first, you're not going to look good and yeah. you're not going to feel good. But that phase is so temporary mm -hmm. when you actually are committed to being good. Mm -hmm. And what looking good looks like and feels like when you're committed to being good actually is different than what it looks like when you're committed to looking good. Mm -hmm. So your idea of looking good is really when you play this game is really just about the effect that it has on other people, yeah. not the effect that it has on their perception of you. That's it. So here's what I want you to take away from this. I know we got to wrap this up in, in just a minute or two. What I want you to take away from this is, as I said, these are all toggle buttons. Mm -hmm. Your takeaway is, which one of these is the most important thing for you to toggle to the right? Mm -hmm. And again, think about it from both perspectives as a learner and as a teacher. Are you consuming fads and fruits and information and buying expectations? Mm -hmm. And do you need to slow down and go, all right, instead of trying to paint the apples orange, I'm going to plant an orange tree. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. And that'll just slow you down. Michelle just audibly reacted to that. Mm -hmm. Like that will slow you down and go, hmm. So I'm going to trade in my paintbrush for a shovel. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's what I need to do. Or maybe it's from a teaching perspective. Instead of selling paintbrushes, you got to sell shovels. Mm -hmm. But how to sell shovels is different than how to sell paintbrushes. Sure. And if you bought a paintbrush from somebody and you're following their paintbrush selling plan, and then you try to sell shovels in the paintbrush selling plan, that will work next. Right. So it's all about alignment. Okay. Anything you want to add, Michelle, before we land the plane? Really quick, can you give an example? What does being good mean? Like committing to... Uh, certainty in yourself, committing to the understanding of the information, committing to transformation yourself, committing to stability and certainty. What we mean is to like, if you realize that you don't have the body, oh, there's two birds on the top of this, this windowsill over here that I've never seen before. And they're super cool and, and beautiful, like orange. Oh, that, that, sorry. Like just to the right of my, my camera here, these two birds just came to you know, to get the information. So if you recognize that you don't have the body to stand up on stage, right. rather than trying to memorize everything and avoid your triggers, right. let's dive into the triggers and get good at the thing you currently have a deficiency around so that the stage never scares you again. Yeah. Or at least you start making progress toward that thing. So being good and just the difference between doing and being. Right. So this could have also been doing good, 
But the reason that we do good is because we want to look good. And even the reason we want to look good is because we want to feel good, right? right? So all of those are aligned. But being good can actually produce all of those things, but it produces it in a different way. But being a good leader rather than playing leadership, right, or doing leadership. So it's the embodiment work. It's going through the process to actually have the, the rooted certainty and, um, and full understanding of what you're doing. And that takes a long time, right? It's like that 10,000 hours concept. You've got you've to go in. You've got you to learn how to swim by getting in the pool rather than just practicing your strokes on the lounge chair, you know, uh, next to the pool. Like, look how good I swim. Nope. You're not swimming. Anything else, Michelle? Good stuff. No. I mean, yes, but no, not now. <laughs> yes, but no. So if you do have any other information, I mean, not information, but questions that you have, whether you're joining us live or dead, either way, um, keep posting. We see the comments and we'll answer them either directly in wherever you know platform you put the comments or in mm -hmm. another video and be on the lookout because because we have to break this down right like it's killing us that we have to end this video but we got a hard stop and and but it, if it was a two-hour video we'd be like dang we only have two hours i have two hours There's so much depth to each one of these and so many different applications be on the lookout if this is making sense to you for more, whether we do a webinar or masterclass or more videos, because we'll continue to break this down. It's super critical. And just check in with yourself as well and see just an honest reflection of where you are toggled on or off in each of these areas. Yeah. Because the more that you have toggled over to the right, the more you have toggled over on transformation, the more effective you are going to be in your transformational coaching work and in getting that message out to people. That piece, yeah. If you're struggling, it's because you've got maybe all of these toggled to the left mm -hmm. and there's just not alignment. And so as you go, you know, you're going to get better and better and better. Um, man, those are some, those are some solid toggle buttons. Absolutely. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Maybe that'll be a masterclass as well. How to draw toggle buttons. <laughs> It's just a cool phrase, toggle button. <laughs> Can you say it, Matt? Don't touch my toggle button. <laughs> no. Oh, blessed. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no toggle. Yeah. It feels like bubbles to me, right? Like you can't say bubbles, Matt, like angry. Hmm. And I, I felt like the same energy from toggle. Yeah. Toggle. <laughs> Down to toggle rock. <laughs> now Fraggle we're rock. Page. Fraggle rock callback for all the oldies out there. <laughs> now, if you like this video, check out that video right there where we expand on that final toggle about going from looking and feeling good to actually being good. So much of the training is not designed to get you good, it's designed to make you feel not bad.